Thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Fabric of Reality. Um, these episodes are getting better and better every week by a little bit. I know they're still a little bit chaotic. Uh, in today's episode, we talk to Bob Kopis, who is a, I'd say, NDE specialist. He's interviewed over 100 people that had a near-death experience and is able to shine some interesting perspective on the matter. I really enjoyed my talk with him, and I hope you will as well. Um, so please tune in and find out what it's like to have a near-death experience. Bob, welcome to the Fabric of Reality podcast. How are you today? I'm fine, thank you. It's uh, lovely being in Amsterdam, but I see a nice sea behind you, so it must be nice to be at your place too. Yeah, my, my, my wife and I are very lucky that we get to spend part of the year in, in this lovely little sunny place. Um, and you're in Amsterdam yourself? Yeah, it's in right in the middle of the center that That's I live. Awesome. Well, we, we, were, we were born in the same countries. I, I, it's been a very long time since I uh, was in the Netherlands, but you know, it is a, it's a fun country for sure. It is, I, I must admit, yeah, I love it here, especially in Amsterdam. Am, Amsterdam is a very nice uh, free city, so to speak. Very multicultural. It's very. Awesome. And how long have you lived your whole life in the Netherlands? No, I was born in uh, Venezuela and um, I spent six years there, first six years of my life. It was very, very nice. I loved the, the warmth. Mm. And then I went to Iran, uh, was warm there too. And then I came to the Netherlands in one of the severe winters. And that was kind of a hell cool. for me. <laughs> it was so difficult. It was really, that was, I still can remember that, that I was standing in the, in the schoolyard uh, and everyone was playing and I was like, where am I? What is this place? <laughs> what am I doing here? Yes, exactly. I guess that ap applies to a, a, a lot of us say this with our existential crisis. What am I doing here? What's yeah. the point of all this? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's um, true. And, you know, I'm going to have to like address the elephant in the room and ask you, have you ever experienced a near-death experience yourself? And is this how you got acquainted and specialized in the topic? The answer is no. I didn't have an NDE myself, but I was. I, it caught my interest when I, uh, you know, I was born uh, and raised uh, Catholic and with Helen Purgatory, and I never bought that story. I didn't like it. And then uh, when I read the book by Raymond Moody, uh, Life After Life, uh, in it, he, uh, he has a, a, a woman that he spoke to that had a life review. And in the life review, she was not judged at all. And when I read that, that, I, that uh, resonated. Resounded, it resonated with me because I thought that's how it is. Why, why would anyone need to judge you? You can do that yourself when you're in the light, when you're uh, in the presence of unconditional love, you can easily see what you have done less good and, and what you could have done better. Um, but the, the interesting thing there is that there is no judgment. There's no judgment. So and the words good and bad fall away on the other side. That's, that's it what I It makes a lot of sense what you're saying. Of course, I've thought about this a lot. And... The idea that there is a dude on top of a cloud watching her every move. And if you dare to sin, that's it, buddy. Your eternal nothingness is going to be filled with flames in, in, in hell. It's, it's not a very credible story. No, that's not. And uh, the whole idea of original sin was, uh, you know, Adam and Eve uh, eating from the forbidden fruit. That was introduced long after Jesus died. It, it was, uh, it's nowhere in the Bible. It's not in the Old Testament, not in the New Testament. It was just thought of as a construct uh, and probably to keep everyone um, uh, well in line with the, with the people that uh, were in power. It's really motivating, you know, and uh, it's, I say this sometimes, but uh, People think that the strongest human emotion that we can experience is love, and there is truth in that. But if you are entrenched within the um, confines of anxiety and fear, love seems like a distant memory. And sometimes 
I come to believe that fear is the strongest emotion that us humans can experience. And that's why corporations and governments at large will leverage it to try and get you to do what they want you to do. Right? Yeah, exactly. Fear is a very, uh, it's a very bad emotion uh, in the sense that it, it is a, the wrong, it gives you the wrong directions. I, I think the other emotion, uh, which we have all within ourselves, love is a better one. Um, it gives more freedom if you really love. But, you know, another thing that I learned from NDEers is that unconditional love that they speak about all the time because that's what they see on the other side. That is not something you can easily find on earth because mm -hmm. also parents that have children and that you could think of them uh, unconditionally loving their children, even that is not really unconditional. And, and there are NDEers that said the words unconditional are not, an, not adequate enough to express what it's really about. It's much bigger than that. I could definitely see myself behind it. I, if I can put it onto a personal extent, my mom would definitely love me unconditionally as long as I did exactly as she told me to. And oh, way, which is a bit of a Dutch, uh, if, if I dare to veer off that path, um, yeah, I've definitely been seen as the black sheep who dared to explore yeah. other avenues. Um, yeah. That's interesting. It's a good point that, yeah, we are definitely conditioned to do it the way they wanted to. Everyone is conditioned. Uh, there is uh, Love is always uh, somehow conditioned on earth, but it's not on the other side. That's how I understand it. So it's a, it's a surprise that we will see when we go there. I'm, I'm I'm sure I'm curious. Um, as long as I can remember it, that's some of the biggest questions in life that have kept me up at night, and and it's probably a big motivation as to why I'm doing all this. Is what's what's what does any of this mean, and 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 why are we here, and you know how does it all work? It's fascinating. What is your motivation to do this podcast? It's a great question. You know, my father passed away uh suddenly in his sleep and that changed my life um i think i must have been about 22 23 my brothers were probably they're like two three years younger than i am and and then all of a sudden i flew to holland my brothers were there man it's like suddenly losing a parent is 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 super hard and this is something that all us human beings we all have parents we're all going to go through it at some point or rather hmm. and apart from being grief struck and in pain it really put a magnifying glass on my own mortality all of a sudden this hmm. young kid that was running around just having fun and taking life not too serious was confronted with something that was an extremely serious consequence the inevitable demise of us as human beings and the the death part was very scary to me and not knowing what happens afterwards was also something that really scared me um it's been nine years now since he passed away or a little more um but I com I continue with those questions. And while I have gathered much insight and I've been able to form many opinions on the matter, mm -hmm. I haven't really said, okay, this is definitely it. While mm -hmm. I do have certain insights from thinking, you know, that's very plausible, it's very interesting. Um, but as I speak to yourself, Bob, and many other people, everyone has their own point of view on it. And I, um, indeed, love and compassion, and I say this a lot, does come back a lot. This is a big idea that is so easy to get behind because you know i can i can totally get behind that instead of if you don't believe in god you're going to hell instead of do unto others as you wish to be done unto yourself yeah. that, that, that that's that's that, that works for me i mean no one gets hurt in that equation that works so yeah. yeah to answer your question i have a deep curiosity about life and death and everything that happens in between and I find it fascinating. Other people find it a little weird. They just take it as it comes. And I just can't do that. I just can't. So that's it. Yeah, it's funny that you say that. A friend of mine asked me, why are you so interested in, in death and dying? And so, and then I said, well, because uh, if you go into NDEs and you 
understand some of them. It, you have to see a lot of these NDEs or speak to a, a lot of them or read a lot of them because then you get a good impression of what it is. Only then you can get the idea that there's something after this life and it, it helps you also have some hope for this life. There is a reason for this life. You get all these notions when you go into NDEs and that's, that's the reason why I went into uh, studying NDEs. It was more for myself as well to be sure that uh, their life continues and that there is a reason for us being on earth. Uh, and I need, as, as a scientist, I need proof. Um, and it's difficult to get proof for the life after this one. But there is very nice uh, research done, also in the Netherlands, by the way, by people who uh, gathered um, uh, uh, a lot of stories of people who had a critical observation and those are the verifiable out-of-body experiences there, there is a book about this and that's that's uh, actually this book um the self does not die it contains hundreds of these stories and also in my book there are a number of these stories that show you that that uh, some stories of people having an out-of-body experience can be confirmed independently and has been documented uh, independently. So what does it say? It, it tells us that there is circumstantial evidence that our consciousness can exist outside our body. And that's, that's an important uh, notion because until now, it has always been that, that your consciousness is created by the brain. Right. Apparently, that's not the case. Uh, apparently, your consciousness can exist without the body, um, without the brain functioning. Some, sometimes the brain is uh, sort of dead. There's not, no electricity in it. There, nothing moves. Yeah, and great. Yet there is consciousness. So, and, people can rec and people can recite the whole experiences and being able to witness how the doctors had a conversation about resuscitating. And I've, I've, I've studied many of these and these stories. It's wonderful uh, perspective. And it does make one think, hmm, what is going on here? Yes. But That's it still important. doesn't, it still is not a proof of all the other stories of the light of uh, life reviews, of meeting deceased loved ones and stuff like that. But if you if you really uh, understand that the first phase of an NDE sometimes can be verified, so the outer body part, then why would the rest be uh, something that, that doesn't exist? So mm. for me, I, I take that second step. And also there there is another uh, there are some uh, vertical observations where people uh, hear in in their in on the other side that things will happen, and they do happen later on in life. That they are so that's a kind of a confirmation. They they hear uh, that certain things are are going to happen on Earth, uh, and when they go back into their body and they live their life, they suddenly realize that these things do uh, happen. So apparently it's possible to hear uh, something about the future which will uh, occur. That's fascinating. Yeah, the origins of consciousness is of course one of those topics that I think and talk about probably too often because there's, it's a bit of a, you know, rabbit hole. If you start tumbling down it, it's, it seems to be endless and mind boggling. Um, but yes, one certainty is that there is not a single scientist, and I've looked far and wide that can give me a definite answer and saying, oh yeah, this this part right here next to the hippocampus, for example, yeah. that's where consciousness or, or originates, and this is how it works, and this is what gives us our sense of self. Now, if there's any scientist that could give me any definite sort of answer in that, I would have been like, okay, fine, you know, we are. Of, of, um, basically um, a result of our thinking. That doesn't seem to be the case. At no, all. Let, let scientists do their work and then finally they will come up with something. I, I you know, I think the other thing is that um, quantum mechanics and stuff like that also 
develops in a direction that they understand that uh, observing reality is difficult because uh, the one observing reality is also influencing uh, reality. So what is reality? So you, I don't understand all these things, but I think quantum mechanics and physics will go in a direction that uh, will probably or possibly find some ideas that are already uh, in uh, near-death experiences. Hence, mean, the name, hence the name, the fabric of reality. And, yeah, that's it. Right. Um, well, this also, like, talking about quantum um, physics and mechanics, um, if we look at the, the particle accelerator at CERN, um, that's basically what they do, right? They take a, a little piece of matter, a minuscule piece of matter, and then they smash it as hard as they can, and then they photograph it and try and figure out what what the very fabric of that uh, matter is. And it, I heard a scientist, and I'll, I have to post it at some point, but he said, it's almost as if we got now to this minuscule particle and we smash it and there's nothing there. It's as almost as if God got lazy and said, well, you know, they're, ne they're, they're, they're never gonna get beyond this point. They will never figure out, you know, what any of it means, which is fascinating. Now they're gonna build an even bigger particle accelerator that is like 10 times the size of the current one. It's like, wow. this time we're gonna figure it out. Yeah. I don't fascinate to follow along. I think it's very entertaining. You, you know what NDEers say? They they say that, uh, or, or uh, scientists, I think they come up with the idea that uh, particles are uh, quantums of energy or something like that. But uh, NDEers say actually that everything is built up uh, from love. Love is the most important thing. And that's, that's what everything seems to be made of, uh, the whole universe, uh, whatever dimensions we have. Harmony. So, I don't know. Yeah, and then they also don't, it's pure harmony and that everything is pretty much just love and that there is no contradictory, there is no um, plus or minus or negative or positive on It's just love. Seems like I'll take it any day. Uh, so I, I'm curious then, you grew up Catholic, um, you were told a bunch of stories that didn't quite resonate with you, didn't quite compute and you decided I need to go and explore this and figure out for my own, to draw my own conclusions to my own research to figure out what any of this means. So can you tell me your first uh, time that you t spoke to an NDE or, or the event that got you down this path? Well, that, that was in the book of Raymond Moody, but uh, then I didn't find people uh, that had an NDE. That happened uh, something like uh, 20 years after that, uh, around 2000. Uh, I I wanted to know. Well, I did my uh, career at a bank, but then I wanted to know more about NDEs. And I looked around, and I found uh, the International Association for Near Death Studies in the United States. But funny enough, there is a, an organization in the Netherlands as well, uh, a subgroup of that organization. And um, I, I met people there. They were astonishing and, and refreshing in their ideas. And that started it. That started uh, me looking for answers in the comparison of religions and uh, NDEs. And I, that got out of hand. So that, that um, was so big that I decided to just try to publish that. And there was a publisher that wanted to publish the book on uh, NDEs and religions. But the, the, the other book that I had published recently is with, with hundreds of quotes of more than 100 NDEers. And you, you know, I think it's important uh, to, if you un want to understand anything from NDEs, you need to have more points of view because not one NDE is the same as another. That's why I wanted to have so many quotes, so many quotes to be able to, to have a good impression because you don't get anything else than an impression of what an NDE is. You will never understand the whole thing or what it is because it's maybe it's even another dimension. And if it's uh, one dimension more than the three that we have now, space, uh, space time, that's four dimensions. If it's one dimension more, we cannot possibly understand what that is about. It's yeah. impossible. 
it's hard to be able to comprehend that because you don't have a frame of reference to be able to compare it to. Yes. Um, so you, you, if you think of, of uh, uh, suppose there is a country where there's only flat people, they don't have height. If they, uh, one moment they, they barge into our, one pops out of that uh, country and then comes into our land and see us sitting there with height and, and uh, volume, they don't understand what that is. And if they have to go back and they have to, to explain what that is, they can't do that because they don't have the concept of height. So it's that's the same thing what we are. If we are in 3D or 4D with time, and we go, we move on to another dimension, we cannot explain to our friends and, and family what that is. It's, it's impossible. I think it's called the, uh, the, there's this cave experiment. There's, there's this group of people that only see in the cave and only see these reflections on the wall. But once yeah. they leave the cave, all of a sudden there's this, or just one person leaves the cave. I'm going to have to right underneath what this is um came back well, told about the world right plato's thank you plato came up with the, the cave uh, thing that uh, people that, so someone sitting there cannot move and only see the uh, the shadows of people passing by behind him on the, on the wall and doesn't understand what that is so yeah that's the the, the whole idea yeah. and i think that it's can be applied to some aspects of life too if you grew up in a in a little town in the middle of nowhere, and that's the reality that you know, then being able to shift that perspective, it's it's difficult. And um, this is why I'm glad that people like yourself are offering that perspective. Um, what is, what is, okay, there's a question I got, mustn't forget to ask you. You say that every single NDE is different, but you yes. wrote on various religions and NDEs. Is there um, a, a difference between, um, whether or not a Christian or a Jewish person or a Muslim, do they have a, a different uh, heaven that they or, 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 or that they get to or a different space? Do they experience it differently or it seems to be just generally the same? That's a good question. You know, uh, I was wondering about that too. And it's difficult to find uh, a lot of uh, people from other religions uh, that have had an NDE because we are here in the West that's more mainly Christian uh, belief, Judo Christian belief, but there are there are a lot of uh, there are still a, a lot of NDEs from other religion uh, from people with other religions, and they, you know, the thing is that they find an other realm. Um, so that's similar to the ones that we know in the West. The unconditional love is very very important. And uh, being part of something that is very closely interconnected with others, uh, that is also found in other religions. What, what the differences are, there are cultural differences. Uh, and, uh, you know, people from, for instance, uh, Islam, uh, who have had an NDE, uh, sometimes see uh, religious figures from their uh, a religion. So, for instance, the, the Mahdi in, in Persia, there are a number of stories that I know of. Uh, in Hindu uh, country or in Hindu countries, you will find, for instance, they, they see Vishnu um, and uh, Kali and, and uh, other uh, gods from the Hindu realm. And, and in Christian uh, countries like our own, uh, you, you will find people seeing Jesus. So, but Jesus is not the only one. There's a lot of other religious figures. Also, Muhammad, who is not a god, as you know, he's a, a, a very important prophet in Islam. Uh, he's also seen um, sometimes. I think that the Netherlands is one of the countries with the least lowest number of religious people these days. I think it's only like 0.5% or something. While back in the day, that used to be the 40 or 50% of the company, the country. Now we were massively into Christian religions, Protestants and Catholic, but that people are still sometimes registered as Catholic or Protestant, but they, they don't believe anymore in, in that. They, they moved on to something else. Um, they're turning churches into really cool 
cafes, bars, and restaurants these days. You know? Yes, exactly. Yeah. Um, Hotels, even very nice. Yeah. That's a great use of that space. Um, what has been the most the most surprising aspect to you in NDEs? Um, you know, what I think is surprising is the idea of oneness. Uh, that's really something that, that boggles my mind. Uh, and I, I, let me give you a quote there, or a few quotes. There's, um, um, there's this one that says, uh, that's a woman from the Netherlands that I spoke. Uh, she passed away definitely now, but before she did, she had her NDE. And she said something like, uh, I feel completely perfect, completely one with the light and with the love, and I know it is God. I am in God and God is in me. We are one perfect unity. So that it was her quote, that she felt really one with God. And that's, she's not the only one that, that feels that way. Um, there's, for instance, someone uh, that I know also, uh, she said um, she she saw Jesus uh, in her ND and, and Jesus took her heart or my being, my identity, the energy that is me and he merged with it, uh, blended it with uh, his heart and for a moment we were one. I exploded into the light itself. I could feel all the his feelings of love and it was mind blowing. That's what she said. And um, and 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 uh, another one that's really very nice. It's uh, you know she is um, she had her NDE, and that's this is a very powerful one. In uh, according to myself, she said um, she she exited her her body, and she says then. Freedom, it was such a wonderful freedom to have no emotions and no experiences. I went to the place where I no longer exist as a separate entity. It's like a drop in the ocean. You're totally dissolved. There is no separate consciousness. There is a vastness and you're dissolved in whatever words we use for the Godhead. So what she says is first she was glad to leave her body because then she could be free there were no emotions no pain or whatever but she went further there was a next step where she even noticed that her consciousness was merged with something bigger uh, mm -hmm. and that that was the dissolved in something that was bigger and you know I, notions of these are told so often by the ears that there we, at least we are are very closely connected to others um, but it's also it goes further we are those others and if you look at life reviews in life reviews you will find the same thing life reviews are exactly what they are what they say it's it's a review of your life and how do you see your life is not as an onlooker or you look from your own perspective alone no, you see it also from the perspective of the other, the one you are in acting, uh, interacting with. So be it nice or be it less nice, I don't know. But you will feel it as if you are that other person. Uh, there, apparently, there is no distinction between you and the other person if you are in your life review and you feel what you've done to others. Now, that that is... I think those two things are very powerful that you that these quotes that I just gave you and there are more than just these three but also the 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 feeling in life reviews that you feel everything from the perspective of the other you are that other person for a, a little bit so that that gives me the idea that we are all one and we are I mean, that's an interesting notion too there's a lot to unpack there because you know while we're being humans, while we're human beings, and we sit and we have the ego, a lovely tool. <laughs> we are so, and I say this a lot, but we're so entrenched within this experience. Like, if you've never had any kind of experience like that, this this is it. You're you're, you cannot even think about the idea that perhaps you would ever lose this individuality. 
Because I guess that's maybe why we're coming here, right? To have this, even the words itself, human being, being yes. human. Yes. That makes me wonder too. I guess there's a, it's a very scary thought, the idea that we would lose that individuality. <laughs> you think so? so? No, I definitely, I, that's how I would perceive it. I think some people would have a lot of anxiety around that idea. We would merge with it, with it consciousness, and we would lose this individuality that we work so hard to create and to accept and to live. That yeah, the idea of losing that. Do yeah. you see it there? But look at it this way: if, if um, the ego, you say uh -huh. losing your ego is difficult. It's it, it gives you anxiety scary. scary yeah but look at it this way if you're a, a player on a on a stage and you ha are in a in a play and you have a certain role your role is different that's your ego and that's how i see your ego is your role here on earth so you're you're doing a play here in that's this role your play. character your character i'm a character too interesting <laughs> All your listeners are characters as well. But the moment they they step off the stage, and that's when you die. I mean, then you step off the stage. You can leave behind your ego because that's only your role. It only also, served us here. It won't serve us in the next part. No, because in the next part, you are yourself. It's like if you go to a stage here or to a theater, the the what the, the villain in the play is not going home still being the villain uh he's not going to kill people on the street because that was a role only in the theater and that's the same thing as i see it with with our lives here this is a big stage uh and we have to play a certain role in it um and when we step off the stage we can be ourselves and ourselves is we are divine that's how i see it and that's that's um also supported by a lot of quotes from andy ears and yeah i, I just want you to, to uh, mention my book then i mean yes. it, it gives you uh, impressions of near-death experience with all the quotes there uh, and that gives you then these things to think about is uh, one chapter in the book why are we on earth the answer is uh, not to learn anything well some people think it is to learn something but there is like for instance uh, this little girl christina eight years old she was abducted she was uh, taken away by two men they tried to drown her um, and from under the water she could look up through the water and see the sunshine and at the same time she was in the sky looking down on on the scene she had a dual perspective and then um, she could see her father coming towards her but then she had her NDE and in her NDE she saw this elderly person and she said well that couldn't have been other one and uh, no other one than God so and god had a conversation with her and he said you have to go back you have to live your life there's a reason for it and it's very easy life is easy because there's a recipe of four ingredients and the four ingredients were love be love just be experience life that's what she uh she took back home and that's what i tell you now so it's love be loved just be you don't have to do anything for that just be or experience life that that's our purpose that's that's what we are supposed to do here with a certain uh role to play uh, you have your role you are in in mexico and and living with your wife and children uh somewhere near the beach and i'm here in amsterdam doing my role here being looking after children that i have to uh, learn dutch and arithmetic and stuff like that Interesting. So you have a lot of perspectives from people that had near-death experiences. Um, the one thing I think might be beneficial to whoever's listening is, did any of those individuals continue to live their lives with any sort of fear or anxiety when it came to death and dying? Did they fear death after their near-death experience? The answer is no. 
they don't have any fear. Most of them, and the, the, that comes out of research as well. It has a very high number, like in the 90s somewhere. Uh, people that before their NDE, they had uh, some kind of normal anxiety of dying, uh, fear of what happens after that. Uh, but afterwards, uh, almost 100% of these people are not afraid of death anymore. It, maybe they are afraid of the, the way they will die, but sometimes they even long to that. Uh, uh, so they, they have this kind of um, homesickness. But they, oh. they they want to go back again. That's that's how they feel it. They 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 want to go back to that place, but they know they they cannot. Uh, do it uh, on purpose because there is a reason for them being there. Sometimes being told to these people, there is a reason you have to go back. That's uh, a good reason. Everyone has a reason to be here. Fascinating. Yeah, there's no person on earth that has no reason to be here because if you if your reason ceases to be here, you will die. You go back. Once the um, mission is complete, sort of thing. Yeah, your mission is complete. So even the beggar in the street is not unimportant. And everyone serves a purpose in life. Everyone is important. Everyone is important. I also remember people, people, also listeners, maybe there are listeners that have pain or are in distress for whatever reason. There is, you are important enough to be here and to go through this, uh, and it will be valued. Uh, that's how I understand it. The, the, in, in, in the afterlife, uh, the light will be delighted that you went through all your problems. Uh, but not only problems, you have to also try to enjoy life. Uh, the light, uh, the, the flowers, the, the children, the, whatever it is, you can enjoy. I mean, that might, might be really hard because some people live impoverished and pain. There, this is also one of the things that I'm trying to wrap my head around. So how can some people suffer so much and and be a lot worse off than I am, or or you? And and why? And why do they have to suffer? And and no. your point. When I go to tell them, look, I know you're struggling to find enough money to feed your family right now. Just remember that this is all meant to be. So just roll with it. And that person is going to go, well, fuck you. Yeah. But, yeah. And it's and it's really unfair in, in any different perspective. Um, yeah. So. But not if you if you take uh, if you try to take a higher perspective on this, uh, that we are all one. I mean, if you see someone struggling and having a lot of pain, you have to understand that's also you you are there as well you are leading let me put it differently uh suppose you are god let's just make this up suppose you are god you can split yourself in eight billion people and then lead lives some people will be impoverished have a horrible time some people are having a, a nice time then when they die they come all together again but it's still you it's god doing this so God is leading all these lives. That's how I understand the oneness. And it's it's something that is maybe far off, but these quotes that are there, so many of them that we are all one, it means that life actually is a zero sum game. It's like, if I do something to you, I actually do it to myself. That's interesting. Uh, to the universe or to the one or to God or to the light or whatever you want to call it. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't go nowhere. It, it, it goes somewhere in that because I do it to you and you, and you receive it, but it's also me. It's a, like a zero sum game. It's an interesting point that you're bringing up. I mean, the way I looked at it as well, I mean, my life hasn't always been easy. And I've overcome my fair share of adversity. Um, and today things are, in, in terms of finances, my family and I are doing just okay. Um, but we haven't ever been freer in a sense and been able to enjoy the things that are important to us. And I think if I reflect upon my past, 
I could only enjoy life today as it is because I have faced that adversity, because I've overcome mm. these struggles, because, and often this pain was bestowed upon me um, in, in, as an experience. And I now come to ask when something bad happens to me rather than why is this happening to me? Or mm. instead I'll ask, what is this trying to teach me? Yeah. And um, it's a really difficult one because you want to um, you want to put yourself in a victim role. I think that's kind of a inherent human thing that we do, yeah. where it's yeah. like, poor me, why is this happening to me? Yeah. But just a slight shift in mindset there has been, but that that took a decade. So just that slight shift in deck uh, uh, mindset sounds really easy. That was really hard. Uh, but eventually I, I, I got it. I finally stood it. I couldn't have gone to that realization had I not faced all this. Basically. Yeah. Yeah. There's, you can also look at it from another point of view from uh, some NDE years have seen uh, uh, their life before they enter it, before they become the baby that uh, develops into this human being. And then they could choose what kind of experiences they want to go through. And I'll, I'll show you, or I'll, I'll tell you this story about uh, Betty Guaidano, and she is uh, in, in New York uh, also having a podcast. She's part of the IONS organization as well. Before she was born, she was told she could go to Earth uh, and she was uh, happy, so happy to, to have to go to Earth because she finally could experience life. And then she was shown all kinds of stuff that she could choose from. And she said, it was as if I was in a, in a grocery short store with my uh, cart going through it. And I could choose my experiences. And she, she loved to choose the difficult ones because she, had a, she chose a dysfunctional family. She chose uh, rape, uh, um, uh, drug abuse, uh, prostitution, you name it. She chose all these horrible things and she was excited. And she saw that when she had her NDE and after her NDE, she changed and she she's now not a drug ad addict anymore. And she does wonderful work uh, with with in, in the community. Uh, but it, it's like, maybe it is also something that we chose to do uh, to go through a number of problems and through a number of nice things don't forget that we all have also nice moments in life but it's we have to try to make those the majority and help others to achieve those moments as well you know the helping part of others is important too because from that you can show your divinity which we all have, you, by doing nice things to others or helping others, it can be just smiling. It, can, it doesn't have to be big things. It can also be uh, nice, be nice someone in, in a line that you're standing at the, the grocery store or you name it, smile to the beggar in the street, uh, maybe give him something. Uh, I mean, talk to him or talk to people little things count and that that will bring love into the world and that that's what it is all about the more love there is the, the nicer it is and the more you will like it when you see your life review and go through it and you see these moments i must say that uh, sitting on a bicycle in amsterdam is difficult because of all the traffic it's difficult to be nice to everyone <laughs> so i have big problems there <laughs> but it's I, I realize that it's, that it's important. That's interesting. Yeah. I mean, it, of, of course, we're all influencing and impacting one another. So being able to have a positive influence will definitely not harm you in the process. Um, it, so out of body experiences are different to near death experiences um but often compared can you explain the difference for a minute and then perhaps we can dive in a little bit deeper into out of body experiences yeah well if someone has an nde 
um, oftentimes they will first yeah. have their out of body experience. They, they will go out of their body. But sometimes people uh, skip that part. Uh, they they go right into their afterlife or this other realm, uh, the other side of life, as I call it. it so they they are in the light. They they meet uh, uh, beings of light, uh, see their life review and stuff like that. But sometimes people linger around where they are, and they they see, as you said before, they can see the operation going on. Um, one person even said, uh, that's also in my book, um, she was hearing her husband talking in the, on a telephone in the corridor of the hospital. And he was talking to a friend in another state in the United States. So when she heard him talk, she was with him in the telephone booth. And that was so that was some time ago when we had telephone booths. And so she was in the telephone booth with her husband. And when the friend in the other uh, uh, state would answer, she would be with this friend in this other state. And she would go back and forth. So you can, you can when you're in your out-of-body situation, you have no limits. You can be wherever you are. You can go through walls. There's a lot of stories in my book of people who... Uh, go through walls because their body is being taken through the corridors of the hospital and then they the only way they can do it is, is go through the walls and through the the, the 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 doors and stuff like that the rules of physics no longer apply no no it, and that's what you said also it's like the, the particles that we think are solid actually is nothing that's it's all it's empty a very low rate for one or other reason we can go well we can just pass through everything um so there's a lot of stories about uh the first phase uh, of an nde and that's oftentimes an out-of-body experience some people can have an out-of-body experience without um having an nde uh, so there's a lot of people that have uh, something like that they they find this what about psychedelics? Of course, I've got to, I've got to ask about that. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know so much about those, uh, but apparently uh, people are able to, well, exit their body based on drugs or yeah, something like that. It's induced. Um, yeah, possible. I don't know. It's, it's, uh, I think. Do you have, you have an experience like that of your own? No, I've never had an out of body experience. No, I'm, I'm very, uh, well, not common because I think many people have such a thing or can have an, uh, an out of body experience. Did you? Several, yes. Yeah. yeah, no, no near death experiences, but several out of body experiences and death of ego. Fascinating. Mm -hmm. I mean, I could talk about it for hours, but I don't. I'm not going to go into it too much. I think that um, they are interesting perspectives, for sure. And I can relate to some of the things that you're telling me about consciousness and how how it has different perspectives and, and abilities to perceive yeah. this time at this place and also other time. I mean, I, this is a rabbit hole. I don't, <laughs> yeah. Time. time is not there on the other side. That's another interesting Fascinating. thing. Right. Because, you know, it's the, these quotes that the people come with, it's like time is there all at the same time. Think about that one or my experience was not in time, it was between time. So where is that? Uh, mm -hmm. Some people say, uh, when I had to go back to my body, I was it was getting more condensed and I saw that time was starting uh, to speed up again. So apparently it's like something is going on with time there. And location is not a problem either. As I said, you, I just uh, told, uh, mentioned just before with the telephone booth, you can be either in this state or in the other state, and you can be in both at the same time. And But there's another thing that I should have to tell you, that it's um, NDEs are not always caused by a, a medical critical situation where people almost die. 
there are also situations of, of people having an NDE when they have their uh, deep psychological uh, downturn in life, when they are really having a, a problem there. There's a lot of stories of trauma, NDEs for example. Yeah, when you, when you really, I mean, you, some people have, for whatever cause, they can be in such a bad shape uh, psychologically. And, and, and many times these people would have a, a, an NDE. Sometimes with prayer or with deep meditation, uh, there are reports of people having had an NDE. And occasionally also, there are some stories also in my book of people having a spontaneous uh, NDE. And that's, I, I don't know how to, to see that, but this, this guy was sitting on a beach having a conversation with a, with a girlfriend and he had a, suddenly he had a very, very deep NDE. I don't um, know how that works then because once he comes back again, um, yeah. he's totally changed because that's all, also something that happens all the time. People change thoroughly. You, you cannot just I mean, ignore it, your experience. Imagine like you've just done 40 years in life as a human being and you're yes. just getting used to this experience and just having emotions and an ego. And all of a sudden you're yanked out of that. You're shown this whole other perspective. You're still fully consciously aware and absorbing your surroundings, wherever that may be. And then all of a sudden you get put back in that body and it does make one think, what? the fuck just happened and exactly. then you start investigating that i i did have uh the hemi sync meditations by the monroe institute which is a incredible transcendental meditations around mm -hmm. since i the 60s I, I lay in my bed i'm in this meditation and all of a sudden i raise above this void just above my head that is pure white very peaceful and every single sense around my body switches off I had no more sense of my body and it scared the crap out of me. And within three seconds, probably I was back in my body and I sit up in my bed and I'm like, what the heck? And then you start questioning and thinking, okay, but there's a few other examples, but that's, that's one. And it pertains to meditation that definitely caught me off guard and yeah, added to some of the mystery that made me question the fabric of reality. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. The, the, the question can be asked, what are we looking at? So the, and the ears always say what we see on the other side or what we have seen on the other side is more real than here. We think we are sitting on a chair or we are, we are at a table or we are cycling through Amsterdam and think that's real. No way. That's, that, that's just a part of reality. There's more reality on the other side. That's how they say it. I mean, the scientists do seem to think that reality is merely just our brain hallucinating whatever is happening around yeah. and, and picked up by the sensors on our on this little meat suit that we wear. Um, meat suit, that's another thing they say. It's just a, a, a diver suit that's a, a bit too small. It's a vehicle. Uh, okay. yeah. yeah, because people, when they have to go back into that uh, uh, diver suit, they say, I don't know how they got Make my big expanse back into that body they had to in one case they had to squeeze her in by hugging her so tightly that they could slip her in that's funny uh, yeah and there's another story a funny story of a lady who said i was very i'm always very bad at parallel parking because i always wind up a few feet away from the curb and then she had to go back into her body and she said, I missed that one too. So I was, I was actually, I could see my body lying there uh, and I could see it from the side because I didn't fit in uh, right away. I was partly out of it. And then um, fortunately the, there was a, a firefighter that came along. She was lying in the street with a lot of people around her. And he, he uh, did this resuscitation uh, routine and then he pressed his lips on her lips. And the moment that he did that, she said that, that was the moment that I could slip back into my body because somehow or other way, that was the, the, the opening that uh, given to me. And then at that moment, she felt everything about this guy. Uh, how anxious he was in in performing this routine on a on a woman she uh, he didn't know 
a total stranger and then uh, giving the kiss of life to someone you don't know. And uh, with all these people around him standing there as onlookers who didn't know what to do. And, and she felt everything also of his home situation and stuff like that. It's very interesting how people, that's, it's such a strange uh, phenomenon, this. It's, uh, that's why you need more perspectives, more quotes uh, in order to get a good impression of what an NDE is. It's fascinating, and I'm grateful that you are giving us just a glimpse into what NDEs are and what you've dedicated so much time to study and to try and understand it yourself and then to share it with the world uh, so that we can have a glimpse of, of what that is. Mike, I, I wonder um, what are some of the, apart from, what's the title of your book again, apart from reading your book? It's uh, impressions of near-death experiences. Uh, so it's just what it is. Uh, by having more points of view, you get a good impression of what an NDE is, a near-death experience. It has hundreds of quotes in it. It's right. Very interesting. I will certainly read that. And I say that as it's one of the best books because I didn't write it. It's the NDEs that are there. They, right. They, they have the quotes. That's wonderful. Um, this, this time has flown by. I, I, I feel like I, I didn't even get to any of my questions, <laughs> but, um, I guess my question to you is what is the one, I think we've already said that, but what is the one message that you get from everyone that you talk to about life and, um, some advice for people that are struggling with this experience right now. Yeah. You know, I come to think of that. I, the, the thing with Christina, that's the recipe of life. So uh, love, be loved, just be, experience life. But there is this other example of an NDE that I'd like to just touch upon. She, she was a, a woman from the Netherlands um, and uh, had her near-death experience with the life review. In her life review, she saw that she did some things, uh, some nasty things to a, a school friend of hers. Now, she felt it as if she was the school friend. As I said before, it's, apparently there's no division between you and others. Um, and in this case, she was hurt by her own action. But she said later to me, uh, that didn't, that wasn't, the worst part of this, uh, going through my own experience or her experience, the school friend's experience. But she said, the thing that hurt me most was the fact that I saw that there were a lot of options. I could have chosen something else. So, and that's maybe the message for everyone that uh, we have so many choices during the day uh, and if we look back on our choices, the, the, we will be very happy if we see that we made a choice based on love. And I know it's difficult, but we need to, to try to do that because otherwise we will be in the same situation as this woman was that she said, well, I know that it was bad what I did uh, and I'm sorry for that and it hurt. But the thing that hurt most is that I saw that I could have done something else uh, and I didn't choose that other thing uh, that would have brought more love into the world. I think that was, for me, that was powerful. To make more conscious uh, decisions based out of love rather than anything exactly. else. Yeah. Um, do, you, uh, do, you, do you fear death, Bob? Uh, no, just like ND years, I, I took that on. That's uh, like a benign <clears throat> virus that I, so I'm sort of a semi ND year now. I don't fear being dead, uh, but I think the way to die, that's going to be a surprise. I don't know. So I'm, I'm, wait, I'm waiting for that one. I hope it doesn't uh, occur soon <laughs> because there's a lot of things I want to do. Interesting. Thank you so much for sharing this perspective with me. I would love to continue this conversation in the future and for us to take an even deeper dive into everything and the
would be wonderful to do that. Yes, yeah, so let's do that. Yeah, I, I, because it's uh, it has been a wonderful uh, discussion with you, and you touch upon so many things that are so in, important and also uh, interesting. Uh, and and you have your share of experience yourselves. So thank you for being on your show very much. Thank you very much. Appreciate that, Bob. Well, till next time. See you. Thank you for tuning in on this episode of the Fabric of Reality podcast. I really enjoyed today's talk. I hope you did too. If you did, please drop a comment. Let us know, um, like, subscribe, all those things. And of course, a big thank you to wills.com, our sponsor. If you don't have a state-specific legal will, head over to wills.com and create your state-specific legal will today. Um, and sure, make sure to check in next week. Thank you.